I am standing in the Solid Rock Cafe in Ephraim, Utah, and I'm going to show you the Solid Rock Bible Museum that's housed in our cafe. So anybody that comes into our cafe, cafe can have a free informal tour of our museum. It's not huge, but it has artifacts from 85 different biblical sites in the museum. So I'm going to start with this case right here. So this case right here, this is a case that has empires in it, Gentile empires or foreign empires that affected the biblical story in some way. So up here we have Ur of the Chaldees. We have real genuine artifacts from Ur, where Abraham actually came from before he moved into, into the land of Canaan. And then we have, of course, Egypt and Egypt the, the interaction between Egypt and Israel is almost continual all the way through the Bible. Um, then in, in 600 BC, we have Nebuchadnezzar and the, the Babylonians come in. They, they actually are the first nation to utterly conquer the Jews and they carried them off captive into Babylon for 70 years. Following the, the Babylonians, then we have the Persian Empire and the Jewish people were under the Persian rule. Um, Esther, the Queen Esther is one of the, the stories in the Bible that's under Persian rule. So these are Persian artifacts here. Have a replica of, the King, of King Cyrus cylinder, which is a cylinder that is actually talked about in the Bible in Ezra chapter six. So that cylinder, the message in that cylinder is what the Bible is discussing in Ezra chapter 6. Um, down here we have uh, the Greek Empire, which then came in after the Persians, and then finally the Roman Empire, and we all know that Jesus Christ was crucified by the Roman, uh, by the Roman soldiers in Jerusalem. And so these are the empires that affected Israel, and these artifacts, most of these I purchased from antiquities dealers, a few of them are places that I actually went myself. I've been to Corinth, I've been to Athens, I've been to Rome, I've been to the places, some of the places in Italy. Uh, but these are artifacts that are uh, from the empires that surrounded Israel. Now let's move into this other room here. And the next display in our museum is a display of Old Testament artifacts mostly from Israelite Canaanite cities, but the top, the top layer of this display here are all of the nations that surrounded Israel in the Old Testament. So we have the, the Amorite nation, which was the first people conquered by Joshua and the Canaanites as they took over the land of the Amorites. Um, the Arameans, and the Bible tells us that Abraham was a wandering Aramean, and they actually had cities in northern Israel at one time. Then we have the, the Ammonites and the Moabites, who are the illegit illegitimate sons of Lot, who became nations that surrounded Israel on the, on the other side of the Jordan Valley. And the Edomites, and we all know that Edom was uh, re relatives of the Israelites through Esau. So Jacob and Esau, Esau moved away from Jacob and he moved into the land of Edom, uh, which is uh, where Petra is today. Um, then we have the, the Ishmaelites, again, relatives. Uh, Abraham gave birth to Ishmael and Isaac. So they're half brothers. So we have the Ishmaelites, which live in modern Saudi Arabia today. And these are artifacts from Saudi Arabia. And the Phoenicians, and most people don't know this, but the Phoenicians were uh, a Canaanite tribe. They were the, the sea people of the Canaanites, were the Phoenicians. And so we have some artifacts from the Phoenicians. And then the, finally, the Philistines that, that were on the opposite side of Israel on the Mediterranean coast. So we've got all of these artifacts. And then in this part of the museum right here are artifacts from Israel proper. Um, the, the conquest of Israel by Joshua and the Canaanites is displayed in this first level. This area right here, all of these artifacts are Jericho artifacts. We actually have a brick from the walls of Jericho that came tumbling down in 1400 BC when Joshua and the Israelites conquered the city of Jericho. So this, this era right here, we go down a little farther into biblical history to the time period of the kingdom period where 
David and his descendants became the kings of Judah. And so this area all focuses on the beginning of the kingdom period with King David. And then down below that, we have kind of the ending of the kingdom period a few hundred years later when Israel left the God of Israel behind and they were conquered by the Assyrians and conquered by the Babylonians and the kingdom period of Israel ended at that time. And then down below that, we just have miscellaneous other sites that connect to the biblical story that we've been to, um, some on our Israel tours and some just on our own, in our own studies. Over here, as we keep going through the museum, we have a display of Philistine artifacts. So all of these artifacts are artifacts that came from cities that were inhabited by the Philistines. And if you know anything about the history of the Philistines, they were a, a foreign people from the Aegean tribes, from Crete and the, the, the area up around Crete, the Aegeans. They were sea people. They came down into the, onto the seacoast of Israel and invaded and actually settled the whole seacoast. But they were driven back by the Israelites to just the Philistines. That was all that was left. And so these are cities that had Philistine occupation in them. And some of this pottery is Philistine pottery. It's pottery that was uh, in use by the Philistines during the era when they were living in those cities. This large pot right here came from Gath, from the hometown of Goliath. And I actually found that large pot in the city of Gath. It was a part of the temple, the Philistine temple in Gath uh, that was destroyed probably by King Solomon. And at that time is when that pot would have been broken and buried in, in the rubble. And so that's where that pot came from. So these are all Philistine cities. And if we go to the final display case in our, uh, in our museum, these artifacts in here are New Testament artifacts. And so these Cities all have, or most of them have, unique names from the Old Testament because of the 70-year captivity in Babylon when the people of Israel came back two generations later or three generations later and reestablished the cities. They didn't always name them the same things as they were named in the ancient world in the, in the Old Testament times. And so we have new names of sites such as Bethlehem, of course, that was also in the Old Testament, but we have the, uh, some of the sites where Jesus did his miracles, uh, such as Caesarea Philippi, or Caesarea on the Sea, the Caesarea Maritima, or um, the, the Herodium, which was built by King Herod. So we have the, the artifacts from these art things right here. Some of these that are interesting here, this all relates to the crucifixion of Christ. And we have artifacts that show... So, one of the things I like to say to people is when the Bible says they nailed Jesus to a cross, did they really have nails? Is that something real that was really a part of their culture? Did they use nails? And this is a nail that is from the first century. This is the type of nail they would have used to drive it through the feet of a, of a, of a crucified person. So yes, they had nails. Um, the, the Romans gambled for the garments of Jesus. How did they gamble? These are Roman dice right here. I don't know if you can see those very well, but these are Roman dice. And they very well could have used dice or they might have used uh, the, the, the lots, like drawing lots, drawing sticks. Um, so these things are all part of the museum. And these are artifacts from, from ancient Jerusalem. And so we just invite you to come to see our museum, to, to ask whoever's behind the counter, is there anybody here that could give me a little Bible museum tour? This is great for homeschoolers. We can, we can teach them some lessons about Bible accuracy and that kind of thing. We'd love to do that with homeschoolers. We've had whole schools come, whole junior highs come, and we've, been going, we've gone through Bible talks with them and helped them to understand the history of the Bible. And so you're welcome to come. Um, this is a unique thing in the middle of nowhere in Utah, in Ephraim, Utah, in the Solid Rock Cafe in Utah. And so if you're ever passing our way, stop in and check out our museum. We'd love to, love to show you the artifacts in the museum. Thank you.